balance sheet kind of re re um, recession. And I think you're going to, that's, things are going to get worse in the economy. There's a financial issue at the same time as you have this internal conflict. As of January 8th, 2024, the United States national debt had surpassed an alarming $34 trillion. Without context, that massive amount may appear distant and incomprehensible to many. However, within this seemingly massive figure lies a serious and imminent danger. This staggering figure not only represents a financial burden, but it also puts a pall over our country's fate and the legacies of future generations. In today's video, we look at Ray Dalio's startling findings, a seasoned financial expert who has been warning about serious risks hiding in government corridors for over three years. Dangers that have unique repercussions and appear to endanger the entire financial environment. Everything from equities to real estate faces a major threat when seen through the lens of Dalio's warnings. Signs that stem from an issue that began in the early 1980s and is only now beginning to manifest as indicators of problems. Do you comprehend how serious this problem is? We need to start with some history. Debt has been a constant companion of the United States since its founding. Because of its long history, many people regard it as a familiar and possibly harmless part of our national landscape. To avoid boring you to death, I will not go through the entire history up to this point today. However, the most important point is that debt has always been built into the fabric of this country's story. So, understandably, you may wonder why you should be concerned right now. You see, as our debt grows exponentially, we as a country will ultimately reach a point where the amount required to service it becomes too large. This means that borrowing money at favorable rates and terms is really straightforward. However, when conditions worsen and interest rates rise, the burden becomes exponentially more difficult to bear. And we're a lot closer to that than you believe. Currently, the United States spends $169 billion per year on interest payments alone, which accounts for almost 16% of our annual budget. It is anticipated that in four years, the government will spend twice as much on interest as it will on our whole military. This route forward is uncertain and poses a significant risk to our whole financial system. Listen to Dalio instead of me if you want to understand the intricacies and how awful things will get. He emphasizes how near we are to this potentially disastrous future. Are we in a debt crisis or are we headed for one? Um, we are at the, in my opinion, we are at the beginning of a very classic late cycle, late big cycle debt crisis when the supply demand gap, when you're producing too, too much debt and you have also a shortage of buyers. What's happening now as we have to sell all this uh, debt is we then have, do you have enough buyers? There are changes now in terms of the quantities in the world that are being held by um, large investors around the world that have lost money in these treasury bonds and so on. And then there are geopolitical changes which are having an effect. Some cases, some countries are worried about sanctions. And then there's this geopolitical shift. So when I look at the supply demand issue, there's a supply demand issue for that debt. There's a lot of debt. It has to be bought, has to have a high enough interest rate. So a crisis, that's, you know, if we continue down this path in terms of what, what's likely over the next, you know, five and ten years, then you, what you reach the point that that balancing act becomes very difficult. How will we know? And is it really a function of not having enough buyers for the federal debt? Is there any evidence of that so far? Um, we, we're right at the brink of starting to find out that. The amount of selling of government debt um, collapsed, right? We didn't issue government debt. Um, and now we're going to issue a lot of government debt. And so when one looks at, when we look at the buyers, there appears to be a shortage, a significant shortage of the buyers for that government debt. But we're now at the brink of being able to see what that supply demand pa um, picture looks like as we go over the next year and two. So you just heard Dalio explain how the government sells its debt. He simply means that when the government needs funding to cover its expenses, such as infrastructure projects or public programs, it frequently borrows from the financial markets. It accomplishes this by selling treasury securities, which are government debt. 
These treasury securities are simply pledges to return a specific amount of money with interest over a set time period. The government issues various forms of securities, including treasury bills, notes, and bonds, all having distinct maturity dates. These securities are purchased by a variety of investors, including individuals, huge financial organizations, and foreign governments. When these individuals or corporations purchase treasury securities, they are lending funds to the government. In return, customers receive interest on their investment. This procedure allows the government to raise funds to fund its activities without relying entirely on taxes. Now, Dalio is referring to the fact that there is decreasing demand for U.S. debt securities. If there is less demand for these U.S., fewer people and investors will be prepared to lend money to the U.S. government. Of course, this is a huge thing. When demand for U.S. debt falls, a few issues arise. First, the government may have to offer higher interest rates to entice lenders since, as with any product, if fewer people want it, the bargain may need to be sweetened. Second, if demand for U.S. debt continues to fall, the government may struggle to raise the necessary funds. Imagine you needed a loan, and there were less and fewer banks prepared to lend to you. It might make matters more difficult financially. Now let's connect everything together. As the federal government's deficit develops dramatically, it is forced to issue more debt instruments to close the gap between taxes collected and annual spending. However, Ray Dalio's assessment suggests a troubling trend, declining demand for these debt products. When demand for these instruments falls, an important consequence occurs. Interest rates on these securities must rise. Given that we are currently dedicating significant amounts to meet interest expenses, any additional increase poses a serious threat to our economic stability. Raising interest rates on government securities has a ripple effect, increasing interest rates across the board. If taken to its utmost, this circumstance might stymie economic progress and potentially lead to a recession. Now, if we go down that road and things get ugly, you'll wind up with problems that are far worse than just financial. Listen to Dalio's explanation. Given the challenges that we face, uh, fiscal challenges that you describe, uh, we need a political process that will help us get out of it. Do we have that? It goes to the second issue that you always deal with, which is internal conflict. Well, the, the, the things that you see happen over, over and over again when you look at history is when you have a financial not good situation. At the same time as you have large wealth gaps, you start to see the emergence of populism, and we see extremism in both of the political parties. Okay, we see that split. A populist is an individual or a leader or a political person who will win at all cost. That the rules of the game don't as much matter. And so we're in a, a, a the, the January 6th type of incident and so on is very interesting. The political system in terms of primaries and, and the parties tends to create that sort of polarity. I think that, um, I think it's very clear that there is only one good outcome, if we can, and that's a strong bipartisan middle because either of the extremes is not going to be able to be dominant. You're, um, uh, the small right the, um, uh, or, or even the small left. And, um, and as a result, we're seeing a fragmentation. Geographically, you're seeing people move to different areas, not just because of taxes, but of differences in values and so on. Um, and so you're seeing this separation. I think over the next um, two years, um, the real question is, can we maintain, can we have a strong bipartisan middle, or are we going to have that kind of fragmentation? Be, we have two thing, three things aligning that are concerning. Uh, on this uh, short-term debt cycle, I call it, you know, the seven-year cycle, we're about halfway through. In other words, interest rates are now at a level that they're probably going to stay at, but they're probably not going to rise much from here, and there's tightness. And the consequences of that are going to be a weaker economy going forward doesn't have to be a big big downturn because of the household sector, but it is a balance sheet kind of re re um, recession. And I think you're going to, that's, things are going to get worse in the economy. There's a financial issue at the same time as you have this internal conflict. So I think that that's going to make for um, a risky situation. As terrible as that sounds, it is not all negative news. 
In light of mounting concerns about the current trajectory of the U.S. national debt, several historical events offer a reassuring perspective. Consider the aftermath of the Civil War, when the national debt increased by a whopping 40 times. During that volatile period, the United States faced tremendous problems, and its worldwide position was significantly less important than it is today. Despite the gravity of the undertaking, the United States successfully navigated through that volatile period. Bond sales, conservative fiscal policies, a commitment to redeeming currency, and economic growth all played important roles in sustaining stability. Fast forward to the present, and while our national debt is skyrocketing, the United States is significantly better prepared to handle the problem in the current day. The country has a stronger worldwide presence and a diverse economy. Even if debt levels rise rapidly, history shows that smart financial management, combined with measures such as bond issuance and responsible fiscal policy, can help avert hyperinflation. The broad use of the U.S. dollar accounts for the United States' unique position in international trade. Because of the enormous global demand for U.S. dollars, the country may continue to import more than it exports without incurring major currency devaluation. This advantageous position enables the United States to increase the supply of dollars for a variety of purposes, including funding social programs, defense spending, covering interest expenses, and even providing bank bailouts, all without causing a significant drop in the dollar's value relative to other currencies. According to the Bank for International Settlements 2022 assessment, the U.S. dollar accounts for around 88% of worldwide foreign exchange transactions. This percentage has stayed reasonably consistent over the last two decades. This data highlights the U.S.'s flexibility in handling budget deficits, especially in difficult circumstances. There is a significant buffer since many countries will be harmed before the United States suffers serious impacts. While this approach may pose ethical concerns, it represents the U.S. government's desire for letting the rest of the globe face the brunt of economic issues before approaching hyperinflation. So, while there are topics to dispute about, some people believe they are impractical, where, whatever your position on the matter, it is evident that some type of change is required since government expenditure has simply spiraled out of control. Part of the rationale for this is that it has not caused any big problems in recent years. All new rules are written in blood. Thus, a significant economic downturn may be required to shift politicians' mindsets and change the country's trajectory. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons if you appreciated the video. As always, thank you for watching.